Before we begin, today's stream is sponsored by the lovely folks over at X2, which is my gaming channel. I am paying myself nothing to tell you guys that tonight I will be streaming some Sea of Thieves with my good friends Charlie and Corey at about 9.30 p.m. Eastern Time. I'll include a link down in the description. We'll most likely be live around then, as I said, about 9.30, but you can also join the X2 Discord or follow me on Twitter if you want to get a notification. Sea of Thieves is super fun, especially... <laughs> If you throw some rum in IRL so I really hope we can see some of you there it'll be a great time Hey guys, this is Eckhart Slaughter. Hello and welcome to another video. So, as many of you guys know, I've been fairly critical of the Battle of Exegol and just the way generally that the Star Wars sequel trilogy has handled spaceships. And it's hard not to be disappointed when really we got no new starfighters in three movies, or when we know generally that brilliant new starship designs were abandoned for ultimately something a little more safe. That being said, there are also positives and I want to talk about some of them today. But before I do, let's talk about other things in the sequel trilogy regarding spaceships or related to spaceships that I like. And number one, I think, is the Resurgent class. The Resurgent is a beautiful, beautiful evolution of the Imperial Star Destroyer. It's menacing, it's badass, unfortunately we don't really see it in action against other ships, but presumably it's also quite deadly. And I just love how it uses negative spaces in a way that other Star Wars ships really don't. And if you look at the art book for TFA, you can actually see that this negative space design was clearly an important part of the sequel trilogy Star Destroyers, so I think that's pretty cool and just generally pretty creative. I also think Kylo Ren ships, despite not really reinventing anything, were pretty neat, especially the TIE Silencer. And I thought the Radis and just the MC-85 generally was a nice evolution of the Mon Calamari capital ship. Now, speaking of evolution, Let's talk about some of the new Mon Calamari cruisers that appeared in Star Wars Episode 9, and there are a lot of them. Thankfully, with TROS now released everywhere from Blu-ray to digital to online and on Disney+, Plus, we now can take a much, much better look at the ships that make up Lando's fleet. And we also know from books like the novelization and other materials that that fleet was comprised of over 11,000 vessels. Now, there are some problems with the fleet composition, I think they really just threw basically every digital asset at the wall, so we get weird instances of, say, 10 of Han's freighters from Episode 7 showing up in a single shot, but a very large portion of the fleet is also made up of brand new Mon Calamari cruisers, and we also got a better look at these in some of the digital extras for the target release of The Rise of Skywalker. Unfortunately, there's no target where I live in Halifax, so I want to give a a big thanks to Admiral Nick, and you can find him on Twitter, for sharing these images. Admiral Nick, by the way, is like the preeminent expert on Mon Calamari cruisers. He's broken down basically every single fleet shot in the movie. I'll put one on the screen just to show what I mean, so I'll include his Twitter link down in the description. Anyway, there are perhaps up to a dozen or more new variants of Mon Calamari cruiser. However, they do seem to be based on only a couple of basic templates. So. First of all, we have ships which are based generally on the Mon Calamari Home 1, and it's almost like an exaggeration of what was done in Episode 6. So we have the basic Home 1 hull, and then at least four different variants of that, which are wildly different. We have two which almost look like Liberty offshoots, one with really wide wings, another with sort of blunter but longer wings. We have a very unique one and probably my favorite, which has a forward fin. Kind of reminds me of a cool but impractical ship from Star Wars Legends, the MC-140. And then we have another one with just various fins across the body. Very, very cool. I think it's very possible too that there are minor alterations of these ships. It's been mentioned that some of the fleet was made basically by a computer kit bashing different parts together, so it's possible that these were four main variants and then there were sub variants as well. But if we look at this concept art piece, we can see just how imposing, especially the larger Mon 
calamari cruisers are, and I just really, really love these very large ships. But this Home 1 base is only one class of Mon Calamari cruisers. We also have ones based off the MC-75, which is the cruiser from Rogue One. Now we know from concept art that there was at least three variants of this ship. I suspect there were several more, and you can see a whole bunch when you look at the movie. This is probably the easiest of the Mon Calamari ships to distinguish from the other, just because it lacks this sort of organic design of traditional Mon Calamari cruisers, and I'm really happy that these ships continued and survived until the New Republic era, and maybe we'll learn more about what the MC-75 turned into, because I assume these aren't just variants of the MC-75, maybe it's a new type of ship based off that look. Moving on though, Admiral Nick also pointed out, and I will admit I did not notice that, that there are at least three different variants of the MC-85, i.e. the ship that we see in Episode 8. And I like this because Mon Calamari ships are supposed to be generally unique, and that's what I like about most of these ships. I'll get back to the MC-85 specifically in just a second. We've always been told that each one was sort of created individually, that they all have their own nuance, but every time we see an MC-80 in lore, even in Legends, it basically looks either like a Home 1 variant or a Liberty variant. So as Nick points out, we have three variants of the MC-85, one with a ventral fin, one with two side wings, and then one with two ventral fins on the stern. And again, this is a lot of detail that most people wouldn't notice, so special thanks once more to Admiral Nick, but that also kind of ties in to my problem with the scene, and I really don't want to talk about this too much because it's sort of an issue that I've already discussed. The Battle of Exegol was cool in idea. It was sort of an Avengers moment, I think that's what they were going for. The whole galaxy comes to support this small crew of heroes. We see the spark actually light resistance across the entire galaxy. It's a cool idea. However, it's almost too over the top. And we don't have any nuance to the battle. We don't see the ships engaging with the Star Destroyers in a meaningful way. Hell, we don't even get close-ups of most of these Mon Calamari vessels. Sometimes you get lucky enough to see them in the corner of a screen while something else is going on, but we get most of our good looks from concept art. Now, I'm not going to harp on this too much, as I said, because I have before, but I think it was really a missed opportunity to not show off more of these absolutely beautiful Mon Calamari ship models. Still, there is some hope. Maybe eventually we'll learn more about them in some of the expanded universe lore. Maybe the next essential guide to vehicles and vessels will have some detail about them. Maybe it'll just call them variants of the MC-80 or the 75 or the 85, or maybe there'll be new classes of ships used by the New Republic. Who knows, but all in all, very interesting, and I think there's some cool stuff here that I hope you guys enjoy. But that's all I have for the topic today. There are various other new ships that I would like to talk about. I'm going to see if I can get my hands on that Target DVD, and I also want to go through the battle on my own later on, but there's sort of like a chonky Nebulon B especially that I think deserves some attention. So today's hashtag ask at question of the day comes from Seer Smash Channel, who says, do you think the old EU, now dubbed Legends, will ever come back in full swing, or at the very least in some capacity of activity, new releases, films, etc. I'd personally love to see animated adaptions of the old EU stories. And the latter bit is something that I've been arguing should happen. I'm not sure how many of you are familiar with DC, but sometimes they'll do not a low budget, but a middle budget animation for some of their more popular comics. We saw that on sort of a larger scale with like the Killing Joke, but they've done it with many of their comics, to my knowledge, at least I'm not really a DC fan. So I would kind of like to see them do something similar with Star Wars Legends. Do an animated adaptation of the Thrawn trilogy. Again, you don't need to use the official Star Wars voice actors. It doesn't need to be the most high budget thing in the world. Even if they did the DC style of animation, I would be completely cool with. And that's one way that I could see it happening. Is it likely? I don't really think so. I think Disney is a little bit concerned about people not understanding how two ongoing continuities would work. Now, I, th I think people would generally understand, but most people, most Star Wars fans, and Star Wars is very, very expansive in fandom, don't know what Legends is. They've never read a Legends book. They probably don't know who Thrawn is, or even what Star Wars Rebels is. So if you start to reintroduce old, non-canon things into mainstream, people might get confused, and I will admit that. We did see Legends get a bit of a return with a continuation 
of the classic Star Wars comics, which I thought was amazing. And other than that, we have The Old Republic still continuing in the occasional Legends source book for RPGs coming out, but I don't think we'll get much more than that. I would love to see more, but just being practical and realistic, I don't think it's coming. But guys, that's all I have for today. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you have a question you'd like me to answer in a future video, leave it down below with the hashtag AskEck. Anyway, until guys, have a good one. Be safe. Don't let anyone cough on you. And may the force be with you.